Hey guys, it's Aaron. So this is the third and final part of making the haunted house. I'm sorry, it's got drawn out so much. I was really just kind of playing around with making videos and seeing how it works. So this is it. This is the last part. Videos from here on out will be shorter, more concise, and no more multi-part. This is too much work and that's just not a good thing. So with that, I'm just going to hop right in and show you how I finished off the house. At this point, it was all cardboard and craft foam and this was the fi final finishing steps. All right, so the first thing I did was took the whole thing and sealed it with Plasti-Dip. Plasti-Dip is uh, spray plastic, basically, and it seals foam. If you don't seal foam before you spray it with something like spray paint, the chemicals in the spray paint will actually eat the foam. It's kind of a cool process. If you haven't done it before, I suggest trying it, but uh, it uh, doesn't lead to a very good final product. So I did run into a little bit of an issue here with the plastic dip. Uh, as it dried, it pulled up a lot of the self-adhesive foam. This foam was not stuck down very good. So it made kind of a cool look because some of the tiles were popping up, that kind of thing, but some of them popped up a little too much and had to be glued back down. Uh, I wanted to make kind of a widow's walk looking thing on the top, so I stuck some toothpicks in. I tried to just jam the toothpicks through the plastic dip covered cardboard on the top but it didn't work very well so I used a small hand drill to drill some holes in there and poke the toothpicks through. I was very careful to not make them all perfectly straight. I had to make it messy. Uh, once those toothpicks were in the lower roof and the upper roof I wrapped some wire around to kind of emulate the widow's walk, the little hand railing on there. Again kind of making it loose, bent, and uh, broken in a few places. Once that was done, I gave the whole thing a spray down of flat black. This is a spot that I would probably change for next time. Rather than modeling everything in white and then spraying with black, I'll probably model the whole thing, or make the whole thing, build it out of black foam wherever possible. Once that was done, it was time to do some fun stuff. I uh, started painting by using a sponge brush and a chip brush to kind of give the front porch kind of a concrete feel. Just kind of speckling that on there. And then I used various brushes, the older and more beat down the better, to take various shades of gray and white and just kind of paint the whole exterior. Uh, this was actually went really pretty easy. Uh, I was careful not to get too much black down in the cracks because I did want that to be, you know, shadows. I wanted the, the deep down parts to stay dark. So I kind of tried to keep my brush over the top, basically dry brushing all the siding, that kind of thing. I tried to go in the direction of the grain of the wood wherever possible to give it kind of a faux wood finish. So that was done a lot. So all through here. Uh, the first floor, second floor, around the windows, vertical pieces, and then moved on to tile. Tile, same thing. I just try to hit each brush, each uh, tile with the brush vertically, and did different shades, different passes with light gray, white, dark gray, uh, that kind of thing. If anything started to look too bright, I would go back and hit it again with uh, darker gray to bring it back down, and just went back and forth like that. One of the final steps was windows. I took some plastic packaging, cut out some squares, and I put each square over the opening from the back and traced it from the back with a marker. And I was did make sure to label each one so I knew where they went, because they were all slightly different sizes because they were all just kind of hand cut. Uh, once I had those pieces out, I took some small strips of craft foam, painted them to match the exterior, and glued them on to kind of create a uh, mullion look inside each of the windows. Once that was done, I just used CA glue from behind to glue each of the windows into place. One of the, uh, keep saying the last step, but another last step was a quick door. And this was super tiny. It was actually a little bit sloppy, but it was also very dark and hard to see. So I wasn't too worried about it. I'm not even sure it's one of those things you'll be able to pick up in the final shot. The last, last step was wiring the light. In the, uh, the shot in the book, you will be able to see the light from the little green ghost in the bedroom window. 
So I threw in a little tiny green light, wired it up so that I can actually light it up for the shot. And that was it. That was everything I had to do to finish out the house. The, the last steps were the finishing steps were probably most fun because that's when everything got to come together. I especially liked spraying the whole thing with one color and being able to see it like as a unified piece. That was really cool, especially since it started as a whole bunch of different pieces, you know, uh, cardboard, foam, toothpicks, uh, all those separate chunks coming together under that one final spray coat of black uh, paint was awesome. So again, talking about price, what did this whole thing cost? I can't remember where we're at now. I think we're at a couple dollars, three dollars maybe. And most of the stuff I used in this, the, this portion of the build, I had on hand too. I had acrylic black and white paints, so that was done. Toothpicks, wire, had laying around the shop. Um, I actually had all the stuff to do the light too, including the nine volt battery, which was kind of weird. But I had all that, so that was pretty easy. Um, the only thing I actually went out and bought for this was spray paint. So flat black spray paint. And you know, I've, I've actually used a lot of spray paint and I have found that the, 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 a lot of them, there's not a big difference. So for this, I ended up using the cheapest stuff I could find. That was the, uh, the off-brand 99 cent a can for a rattle can of spray paint. And I used one can. So that was another $1. So all in, I spent about $4 on my haunted house to get it completely built and finished. So that's it. That is all there is to the haunted house. Um, like I said, I don't like doing these long drawn out multi-part videos, so it's not going to happen anymore. Next video is going to come out. It's going to cover the hill that it sits on, how that was built. So uh, I already have that all recorded, so I just have to do some editing and upload that. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this. Uh, if so, give me a like so I know I should keep doing it. Uh, leave me a comment too. Let me know if you like this, if you don't like it. Uh, anything you would recommend to make this more enjoyable, I would love to hear. Oh, and go ahead and subscribe too. That way you'll know when the next video comes out. That's it for today. That is the haunted house finished. So I'll see you next time. Thank you.